Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Learn at No Star. In today's session, we are going to write a SQL query to generate date records for a calendar or a date table. So we are going to create that loop and we are going to define a start date and an end date. And then we are going to generate all continuous date values as separate records for inserting into calendar or a date table. So let's get started. So the first step is to declare our start and end date values or the date ranges where we want to generate the date values. So to do that, I am just going to use some variables for now. So we can declare variables like the at start date and the data type would be date and we need to assign it a value. So let's say that we are going to generate values for one year, which is 2020. So I'm going to give it a value of 2020-0101. So starting with 1st January of that year. And then we are going to declare another variable called the end date. Um, and again, we are going to define the data type as date. And we are going to assign it the value, the last value that we want to generate, which in our case is going to be again 2020-1231. So 31st December of that year. So once we have declared the date range or the limit of dates that we want to generate, we are going to write the query which will generate a loop starting from the start date that we have defined and go all the way till the end date. So to do that, we are going to create a common table expression or a CTE, which is nothing but a temporary table that we can refer to while writing a SQL. So with CTE underscore calendar as and then we need to define the first value so first value straightforward we are just going to select at start date as the first value and let's call it date so let's give it a variable name as date since date is a reserved keyword in sql we have to put date within square brackets Okay, so this will generate the first value, which is going to be 1st January 2020. Now we want to generate all the remaining values. So we are going to write another query, which the output of which will be union with the output of the first query that we have defined. That just gives us one record, which is the very first date of that year. So now we are going to use a function called the date add function. The date add function we are using to add one day to every previous date that gets generated. So the second date that we want to generate would be one plus the start date. So the interval in the date add function, you need to pass on some arguments. The first argument that you want to pass is the interval in which you want to add. So we want to add day. So we are passing DD, which means days. How many days do we want to add? We want to add one day. So that is what we have defined here. And to what variable or what column do we want to add that? We want to add it to this particular value that has been generated here. So we are going to put date over here. And we are going to refer to the same CTE that we are defining over here. Referring to the same CDE within its definition is known as recursive calls. Now we have also done another video on recursive calls. So if you want more details on that, you can click on the link above or in the description below. So here we are going to refer to the same CTE, which is CTE underscore calendar. So to mostly generate a kind of a loop, you need to refer to the same CTE. You need to have recursive calls. This is what we are doing here. And this recursion should go on or we should keep on adding one to the previous date generated as an output of this query till we reach the end date. So here we are going to define our where condition where this whole function that we have applied over here is less than or equal to at end date. So this becomes a CTE. And once we have defined the CTE, we should be able to obtain the output from this query. So for that, we have to write a select statement on top of this. So select date 
from CTE underscore calendar. So this should serve our purpose and we should be able to see all those values generated over here. Now if we execute this whole statement, Okay, so we have got the spelling wrong here. So this becomes at star date. Okay, now let's execute it again. Okay, so when you execute it, what would happen is that you would get this warning message which says that the maximum recursion 100 has been exhausted. Since we are generating dates for the whole year, that means there would be 365 or 366 days or dates generated based on whether it's a leap year or not. But the default recursion limit is 100 records. So now we need to override this and to be able to generate those 100 or how many records you want to be generated you need to add another statement over here which is option max recursion and if you give zero over here that would mean that there would be no limit on the recursion you can also define some finite value so let's say we define 400 over here all right so if we define 400 and now we can execute this we will get all the values generated. So 2020 was a leap year. So you have 366 rows generated over here. And as we said that if you want no limit on this recursion, you can also specify a zero. It will also give you the same result. All right. Now, if you want, you can change these values. You can generate it for any year or you can generate it for maybe two years so let's say from 2020 we want to generate it till 2021 we can do that as well so we can use the same query and now you have 731 rows generated the first row is 1 1 20, 20 and the last row will go all the way till 31 12 2021 so this is the same logic that you can use to generate any continuous range of values so even if you want to generate let's say uh some row ids simply a continuous range of numbers from 1 to 500 or something like that you can use the same logic which is a recursive query over here which would let you generate all those continuous ranges of values i hope that you found this video useful if you did then please do not forget to subscribe to a youtube channel thanks a lot for watching goodbye